Hi guys, it's Ray here from Man City Fan TV. Well, it was rumoured to happen. We knew it was going to happen, really. Spurs versus Man City has been rearranged for the 29th of October. Now, I've done, I think, three videos on this in the last month or so, as uh, news was uh, slowly filtering out or leaking out uh, about the problems Spurs had with the uh, their uh, redevelopment of their of White Hart Lane and the problems of this uh, delay and this overrun uh, of a complex project. Um, and in the past, my unhappiness, my ire has been directed at Spurs because uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, this was uh, totally of their doing. They've got a very complex project that they so somehow thought they could spe squeeze into about 14 or 15 months or whatever. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, there's a, always a big risk of a delay uh, in a big uh, construction project, a complex project like this. And I don't think they made proper contingency plans, the Premier League as well. Uh, they were not, I don't think, um, by the looks of things, they didn't uh, really consider the fact that Spurs could, uh, uh, Spurs may not have their uh, ground ready in time for the start of the season. So I think they're, you can hold them to account as well for this. Um, but as I said, it was mainly Spurs' doing. Uh, they should have, as I, I said before, they should have uh, booked Wembley for two seasons. Just take the risk out of the equation and it's nice and clean and smooth for everybody. Everybody knows what they're doing, where they are. And I think it would have worked much, much better than what's currently happened. But now, um, yesterday, it was announced that City, that Manchester City, We'll be, low, uh, we'll be laying on free coaches, free coach travel from Manchester to White Hart Lane uh, for this Monday night fixture. And on the surface of it, that's very good. It's a great gesture from the club, you know, saving uh, fans money. But when you dig a little deeper, you think, hang on, it's just, it's kind of just like window dressing. It was Manchester City, I believe, who have agreed to this. Don't know if the Premier League um, uh, put some pressure on them. Don't know if some money's changed hands. Absolutely no idea right now what's exactly happened. But all, what we do know is City have agreed to this. Now, we, we look at it and say, well, what are, the, what are Manchester City as a football club actually doing for their fans? Now, if you go onto social media, I was on Twitter last night, and uh, there were a lot of disgruntled fans. Fans saying, well, I've just paid 53... One fan said, I've paid £53 for my train ticket. What am I going to do now? I'm assuming he can't get that refunded. That's down the toilet. Uh, there's another fan from America who said, I've just had to change my flights. It's cost him over $300. Now, who's going to refund him? Absolutely no one by the looks of things. Uh, I think it's really poor of Man City. Uh, as I said, it's window dressing. It just looks a great gesture by the club to have uh, laid on this free coach travel that nobody really, uh, on Twitter anyway, really wants. Nobody really wants to go down on the coach. People would much rather go down on the train. Uh, people are having to take a day off work now, whereas before they could have uh, arrived back in Manchester in the early hours. You know, something like a 4.30 kickoff, it's finished, it's, you know, you might be able to get a train at 7.30, you'll be back in Manchester 10, 10.30. So you can at least sleep in your own bed. Now, if it's uh, an eight o'clock on a Monday night, if you think about that, the game's gonna finish about 10, around, around about 10 o'clock. By the time you get to your train, it's half 10, 11. I'm not even sure if there's trains uh, around that sort of time, back up to Manchester, I normally drive. Um, you know, if you're finishing 10, 30, 11 o'clock, getting into a car, you're not gonna be home till three in the morning. Uh, on a Monday morning, it is getting ridiculous. And as I've said, people have taken time off work. Who's going to give them that time back? Who's going to pay for them for that? Uh, it all costs the genuine fans time and money. And uh, in these austere times, I mean, a lot of uh, City fans, season ticket holders, we're still working class uh, uh, generally. And uh, people have got to work and they've got to set aside money for extra money for this. And some of them, as I said, have lost money. Now, I've said before, what should have happened, you should have had Spurs coughing up for this. It should have been Spurs saying, we'll refund everybody. It might cost us a couple of million pounds. Tough. And as I said earlier, City should not have accepted this. We're now going to have a backlog of games by the looks of things. Are, are we looking to get knocked out of the Carabao Cup? You know, uh, against Oxford? Because that's the only way we can avoid this fixture congestion. We're going to have Spurs on Monday night. The Carabao Cup fourth round is supposed to be sometime that week. I can't see us playing on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. That's ridiculous. Most likely we'll end up playing on Thursday. And then we'll have a game against, I think, Southampton on the following Sunday. And three days after that, 
We'll have a game against um, Shakhtar Donetsk in the Champions League. Four games, ten days, nine days. Ridiculous, absolutely bizarre. And it's not something City should have agreed to. They should have let Tottenham stew in their own mess. It's their fault. Um, should have let Tottenham go to another ground in London um, on the Sunday. Whether it was the Emirates, which they would have detested or would have hated, and whether Arsenal would have even let them, I don't know. They could have gone to the... Uh, um, uh, West Ham's ground, um, the London Stadium, whether they'd have agreed to that or charged them an arm and a leg, I don't know. But that's the, what the Premier League and City should have forced Spurs to do. They should have played the game somewhere in North London or in London that was reasonable, that didn't uh, have a, a big negative impact on City. This one day does have a negative impact on City. Um, and it doesn't, and, and they should have chosen something that doesn't have such a negative impact on the uh, City fans as well. And their own fans. They don't give a damn about their own fans at, in, in, uh, in, at this juncture. They don't really seem to care. It's, I think both clubs, it's, they're awash with money. Uh, you can see I'm a little bit uh, irate about this. They're awash with money and they don't seem to care about the fans enough. Um, and, I, you know, there's all these other leagues, like La Liga, talking, uh, having a game in uh, America. What do they care about the fans? I think when, when big, big money's involved, the fans, we're providing less of that money through the uh, ticket receipts. Um, you know, City turn over hundreds of millions, same as Spurs now. And uh, whilst the fans are providing less and less of that overall turnover in terms of percentage, it seems to me that we're having less and less of a voice and people and clubs are less and less concerned about us. So this is a diabolical move that the Premier League have allowed to happen. It's terrible what Spurs are doing. And I actually think it's now, I've moved the disgrace from just being Spurs to City as well. We should be thinking about our fans uh, a lot more. It, it didn't take much. It wouldn't have taken much over the last few weeks for City to have done some research to see what fans on the ground actually want and how they actually felt it's not coming to people like man city fan tv go on to twitter go on to social media go out, uh, feel out to your uh, official supporters clubs in the area see what the uh, the actual fan on the ground feels and thinks it's not difficult it's not rocket science it's really really easy it took it takes 10 minutes 15 minutes on a social media platform you can say okay a lot of fans are on twitter or Facebook or whatever, but you'll get a very good understanding in a very short space of time as to how City fans feel about this. And I think, quite frankly, they're disgusted at their own club. And it's a shame, just as an aside. Uh, I heard reported, I didn't listen to it, Jason Cundy on TalkSport last night uh, saying, well, what kind of fans have bought tickets already? Actually, Jason, it's the fans who haven't got tons and tons of money to spare to throw at tickets uh, willy-nilly, buy first-class tickets or whatever. A lot of fans, as soon as the fixture change was announced, they went out and bought the cheapest tickets, train tickets they could because that's the way a lot of people have to operate. As I said, in these austere times, people haven't got money uh, growing from trees. They haven't got millions in the bank. And yes, some uh, pampered ex-footballer can afford to buy train tickets the day before or on the day and pay the premium prices. But a lot of genuine football fans, long-time old-school football fans, can't afford to do that. So, Jason, unless you corrected yourself or hopefully someone corrected you on the radio last night, you're well out of order in your cushy position that you sit in. Uh, just to finish, I really wish uh, City hadn't done this. As I said, it's terrible. It's terrible for the fans, terrible for the club. Um, we've bent over again. That's how it feels like. People say City have just bent over for Spurs or the Premier League. And I think it's wrong and I think it's disgusting uh, the way the fans are treated. Guys, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, what's stopping you? Big red button down below, just click on that. Click on the bell icon so you're notified as soon as we put out new videos. And we are, I think without doubt, uh, providing the broadest range of uh, Man City news and fan interviews and fan comments. Fantastic uh, series of interviews with David Wyatt that Andy did, a, Andy did a couple of weeks ago. I think that's a six-part series, well worth a watch and a listen. And we're inviting content from all over the globe. We had a great piece from uh, our uh, uh, reporter in Goa, uh, who's working with the official sports club in Goa in India. Uh, fantastic uh, report last night, uh, just giving an insight on him and uh, the Man City fans around uh, India and the Abu, Abu Dhabi. And we will have more of the same 
uh, in the next few weeks. More uh, fan interviews at matches and content once or twice a day. We'll have videos out and at matches. You, you can't miss us at matches. We're there very, very early. We actually go to matches. Uh, we get there at least three, normally three hours before a game. We're hanging around an hour or two after the game, meeting fans, talking to them, uh, getting interviews. So just if you see us, come along, have a chat. Uh, get your opinion across uh, to other City fans and uh, yeah, let's uh, see how the season rolls on. See you around Blues.